While it's great to be able to run genetic experiments on peas or other organisms that breed quickly and in large numbers, there needs to be a better way to predict the offspring without having to actually breed the offspring. That's where the Punnett square comes in. It's a diagram used to predict an outcome of a breeding experiment. We'll start with the simplest kind of Punnett square, a monohybrid cross. Here we made individuals with different alleles of one gene. Remember, the male and female only give half of their alleles, so we need to split their alleles up. Typically, the male alleles are written on the top and the females on the side, but it doesn't actually matter. Bring the letters on the top down and fill in each box. Letters on the side come across to each box. Your results show probabilities for the genotypes. In this case, 100% are heterozygous. But there are lots of other possible combinations. For example, if a homozygous tall man and a heterozygous tall woman were to have a child, what are the possible genotypic and phenotypic ratios? In this case, we're crossing homozygous and heterozygous. We know that tallness must be dominant because the heterozygous woman shows tallness as the trait. Homozygous tall, then, means homozygous dominant. We'll put two capital letters at the top for him, and a capital and a lowercase letter on the side for the woman. Next, we'll fill out the Punnett square. Knowing that each square is worth a quarter, or 25%, we can figure out the genotypic and phenotypic ratios. The genotypic ratio is 50% homozygous dominant, and 50% heterozygous. The phenotypic ratio, however, is 100% tall, because having just one tall allele will make a tall person. Traits can be dominant or recessive, and when we track genetic diseases, most diseases are recessive diseases that occur on the autosomal chromosomes. This means that in order to have the gene, two recessive alleles would be present. Autosomal dominant diseases would need only one disease allele for the disease to be present. An example of an autosomal dominant disease is Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominant disease that affects the nervous system and shows up later in life. If a woman's father had the disease, what would the probability of her having the disease be? Is it likely that her father was homozygous dominant? First, this is an autosomal dominant disease, which means that recessive alleles are normal. That means that mom would have had a normal gene. And only the father is affected. It's a very rare disease, so it's very unlikely that he'd be homozygous dominant. He's probably just heterozygous. Now we can fill out the Punnett square. The genotypic ratio is one heterozygous to one homozygous recessive. The phenotypic ratio is one to one Huntington's disease to normal. That's a 50-50 chance of the woman having Huntington's disease. She'll probably want to be tested knowing these odds. Let's look at a recessive disorder. Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disease resulting in the body's production of excess mucus. What would the probability be for a couple who is heterozygous for the trait to have a child who is affected? Since it's autosomal recessive, both recessive alleles would be needed to show the gene. The parents are both heterozygous. Being heterozygous for a recessive trait can also be called a carrier. Fill out the Punnett square and we see that there's a 25% chance that they'll have a child with cystic fibrosis. The other 75% would be unaffected. You can even use a Punnett square to find the chance of having a boy or a girl. In this case, we use the sex chromosomes X and Y. Males have an X and a Y, and females have two X chromosomes. Cross these just like you would any other Punnett square. Then you see that there's a 1 to 1 or 50-50 chance of having a boy or a girl. Now, just because a couple might have four girls in a row doesn't make them any more or less likely to have another girl. Every single time a baby is made, there's a 50-50 chance of it being male or female. Use a Punnett square to determine the possible genotypes of the F1 generation when a heterozygous black rabbit is crossed with a homozygous brown rabbit. Since brown is recessive, we know that black must be the dominant color cross the heterozygous and the homozygous recessive, and you get these results. 1 to 1 heterozygous to homozygous recessive, which means that we get a 50% black, 50% brown ratio. Let's try another problem. White hair is dominant over black hair in sheep. A white male and a black female are parents of a black lamb. What is the probability that their next lamb will be white? 
The only way that the parents could even have a black lamb is if the white-haired sheep is heterozygous, like this. That means that there would be a 50-50 chance that the next lamb would be white. Let's do one last one. The offspring of two short-tailed cats have a 25% chance of having no tail, a 25% chance of having a long tail, and a 50% chance of having a short tail. What can you hypothesize based on this information about the genotypes of the parents? The 25-50-25 pattern is common when there are two heterozygous parents. The genotypic ratio matches the phenotypic ratio in the problem. So we can hypothesize that the parents were both heterozygous. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.